It's been a while. It's Coffee with Chris once again with our favorite coach to, you know, talk to. Uh, thank you so much for joining me, Coach Lowry, with me. It's been how long since we last talk, spoke or done a Coffee with Chris? <laughs> it's been a while. It, it has definitely been a while. Definitely been missed. Um, I think it's something great for our, not only for, for, you know, Kansas State, but for our fan base and for our, you know, to talk about our players and, and just to, to, to talk about purple and white so, mm -hmm. uh, and the excitement uh, that that brings. Exactly. I mean, this is the first time, too, we've done this virtually. Usually we meet up somewhere like Bourbon and Baker, one of those fine right. establishments. But uh, this time we got to do it this way. Maybe next time we, we see each other in person. But I guess let's start, like, kind of um, – I want to start, like, the final game in Bramlage this season, X's final game, because it's been so long since we talked. Let's, let's talk about – the stuff and how the season ended and what it was like for X in his final game and how he showed out for uh, the fans. Well, the biggest, the biggest thing is, you know, what a way to go out, you know, as a senior and a guy who's literally in all the record books, um, like Xavier is. Xavier's in all, he's, he's just all over the record books, whether it's scoring, rebounding, minutes played, games played, um, wins, you know, he, he's just, it, I was so happy for him to see him play that way. Yeah. Uh, and, you, and you always want to go out on a win, your last game as a senior, your last game at home. And um, just so thankful for, for the fans that did stick with us and stick through it. And it was a tough time, but that was a great night and a great time. And, and it was a good, a good, good win. And then, of course, you go on to the, the Big 12 tournament where – I mean, you guys end on a win. So what are the feelings after X, you know, after that, that senior game for X and Bramlage going into that, uh, that sprint center and, I mean, ending on a win because of the crazy, you know, uh, circumstances that happened in our world? Right. We got a chance to really – and we actually played well. You know, we did yeah. a lot of good things. We really played how we expected to play all year, control the tempo, and dominate defensively and really um, compete at a high level and have a lot of people contribute. And, and that was the good thing. And you very rarely get to end on a win. In college basketball, the only time you get to do that is when you win the national championship. So I think it, with the experience with, with COVID and, and seeing how that had, you know, made the world call a timeout. Yeah. You know, it made the world stop. And it made the, – the unfortunate side of it is – you know, you feel so sorry for seniors, so sorry for people that, that didn't get to actually finish their career on their own terms. You know, it was cut short. And it's not only our sport, it's the spring sports. Um, you know, as far as college athletics is concerned, completely wiped out. No, no seniors mm -hmm. um, got a chance to finish their seasons or start their seasons. And then the, the you know, with no, with no end in sight, that being that, that, that you, a lot of the spring sports, so seniors are just done. And that's the unfortunate side of anything. And, you know, my heart goes out to those families and those players and to our players who, who, who didn't get a chance to finish. No doubt. I mean, that, that is tough for guys like that. But, I mean, and since then, uh, it, the, the virus has only ramped up all the things going on in this world. So what has life been like in Manhattan for the squad and, and for you coaches? Well, you know, I've been in Manhattan the whole time. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, we, we, we didn't know what was happening. So we go home thinking that, okay, you know, we'll probably have a chance to get back out and recruiting. This goes away in a couple of weeks, you know. Then we, then we get the stay-at-home order and, and it turns into something different. And, um, you know, it, it was very – I mean, we were on the phone with our own players so much it was almost like recruiting them again. Mm -hmm. You know, it was – but it wasn't. It was just life talk. Like, you know, what are you doing? How are you? And it, it was the fear of the unknown with our guys. And, and, you know, it wasn't always about when you get to come back. And I think that's the, the one thing that trying to promote. Like, we don't care when you come back. We care that you're safe. Mm -hmm. you know, these calls are important because we want to make sure um, your family's okay. And you're okay. And it stays that way. So, the basketball side was secondary, you know, for us as far as, you know, worrying about our own players. Yeah. And how are those players? What have they been up to? What what did they, you guys – obviously you said you talked to them, but since then they've been in MHK. Some of the uh, returners have been back in MHK, right? 
along with Celta Miguel. So what has that been like for them? You know, it's been, it's, you know, going outside, like doing old school stuff, shooting at, you know, in a park, like when that's allowed, like, you know, it's weird. Like you got, it's, you don't know whether you can go outside and play. And that's, yeah. you know, not, I never thought I'd ever experience that in my lifetime as, you know, as a kid growing up, play was everything. And now you, you're very worried about playing mm -hmm. outside. You know, a lot of them doing a lot of dribbling, walking around outside a lot of them are running and jogging and doing stuff to try to get in shape push-ups sit-ups mm -hmm. uh, it's the old way before the before you know basketball became big tv business you know kids went to, went home for the whole summer and then they yeah. came back in the fall and practice started on october 15th you know now it's you know mm -hmm. it's so different you can do work dudes out in the summer the whole summer and you can have them for the whole summer and summer school so it's been it's been almost a, a a go a blast from the past going back to the old days when um, guys were at home for the sun, for most of the summer and yep. then when they showed up it was it was fall fall semester. All right, so one more question on the virus, coach. I got um, how has it affected you coaches and and how you recruit during this time? Well, I think the biggest thing it's done is it's really made us focused on on. Um, using relationships with other other people we've we've gotten kids from other coaches high school AU uh, really focused in on on guys who run scouting services trusting them and uh, you know it's just it's just a kind of a field thing because you got huddle you we, we've there's so many other avenues to watch old games and we've asked people to don't send us highlights send us whole games so we can actually watch your whole game and not all the shots you make mm -hmm. um, which are all special when you get a highlight tape, everything goes in, every dunk gets yeah. made. And, uh, you know, but it's not realistic. So we just want to watch the player, the player play basically in itself. I guess, okay, now let's move on. Let's talk more about the team and stuff. So I'm going to list them all off just for the people out there just so they can <laughs> keep track. All together, we saw Sean Williams, Cardi, uh, Levi Stocker, Davis Sloan, James Love, Nigel Shad transfer away while X Mac and Pearson graduate with the additions of signees, Nigel Pack, Celta Miguel, Luke Kazuki, Davion Bradford, Siri Lewis, and the transfers coming in, Rudy Williams, Carlton Lingard, and Casey Eziagri. Am I missing anyone? And then you have, the, obviously, the other returners of, of Monty, Antonio. So what is it, what is it, what is it, um, have you had a team like this with the turnover that you had? And was some of it based on, I mean, obviously, guys wanted to transfer, but how much of it was uh, the, the season that that was and thinking about how you have to look for the future and start building up an, uh, a more of a, a, a different team. I think the, the number one thing is when you, when you list the guys, you also got to list Cartier Jada, James Love as graduates too. Yep. Cause they, they graduated as well. Um, when you look at the other guys who left, like the, the biggest thing is you want people who want to be a part of Kansas state Absolutely. Um, and you can't let one setback deny that. You know, we 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 didn't have a great year, but that's not that's no reason I want to be a part of the grand scheme of this thing. Because mm -hmm. we do we signed great players, you know, that wanted to be here, wanted to be a part of it, and uh, we're excited about them. So when you move forward, it's not about like who left; it's about who wanted to be here. Mm -hmm. And being here means means that they're obviously want to help you win and get back to where it needs to get. We've done it before. We've had a big class. Dean and Barry and Cam were part of a big class that came in, and yeah. um, they did okay. So we're we're you know we're we're looking forward to getting getting our hands on some some new guys as well as uh, the returners because the three sophomores are back as well along with Mike and Girl. So you know we what we want as a staff is to get back to playing the right way, to playing hard, playing for each other, um, and really the blueprint is set. And the blueprint is, 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 is good. You just got to follow it. And, and when you do, when you play that way, success comes, happiness comes, mm -hmm. happy fans come. And, but I think the one thing that our fans are going to really enjoy with this group, number one, it's a big, they're going to have their big size. We have some big size uh, human beings back in our program, but we also have some very gifted guards. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, the excitement level for this group and how they've carried themselves, knowing that there's a lot of pressure on them, especially the five, the, you know, the high school kids. Um, they've done a great job of, of, of carrying themselves the right way and their approach in the right way, knowing, knowing why they came here and knowing what's ahead and what's expected to, uh, mm -hmm. of them. I mean, obviously, you've talked a lot about the signees before in the past on, on, um, on our show and stuff like that. 
But I guess let's talk a little bit more about them and then dive into the newer guys. What has it been like for Celta Miguel to be um, on campus, you know, with the returners so so soon, you know, sooner than the other signees? What's it been like for him? Well, Celta Miguel has two issues. Number one, <laughs> why, we, why he had to come. Number one, yep. he's, he's not from the United States. And, you know, the other thing is, the, is Corona. So if he did leave and go home, he wouldn't be able to come back. Okay. And so that's a double-edged sword for him. And so um, for him to be able to come in May, in the May semester, and, and to be able to take a class and get going was yep. huge for him because um, he can't just go home. It's a little longer for him to get there. And, it, and, obviously, and obviously with the coronavirus, once you leave the country, it's really hard to get back in. And, yep. you know, and we didn't know when that would be for him. So we decided to keep him in the States and really just, just bring him and, and start him off in the family right away. Absolutely. So the uh, other signees are all coming in this week. Uh, what do you expect with uh, them coming in? Obviously, we saw the new guys coming this last year, but now you got a whole, whole group of them coming in, you know? Yeah, the beauty of it is, you know, even though they're coming, it'll be all voluntary stuff. Yep. Uh, we won't be able to put our hands on them, but they'll be able to get acclimated with uh, the college life. And the one good thing is that we didn't jump the gun and just bring them all right away, just to ensure safety. We, we, we mm -hmm. were really trying to find that happy medium of when to bring them, uh, but not bringing them too soon, but still trying to, to, to bring that camaraderie in the team that team aspect that you get and it's so invaluable in the summer, mm -hmm. um, still trying to find where that was. And yep. uh, I think Coach did a good job of really holding back, pulling back, you know, and just seeing where that would be for, for our guys. And, um, you know, once they get going, they still – we still haven't been cleared to do anything with them. They'll still be able to voluntarily shoot on their own and, you know, like very small groups, maybe two at a time. Mm -hmm. Not sure of the protocol completely but um, we know that you know a lot of it will be with roommate oriented if you're with that guy that's who you're going to be with uh in the other things that you might take part in uh, but again we're we, we're we're totally um worried about safety first with our yeah. guys and that's what our focus is and and really keeping them safe and that's the number one thing so is that rule an ncaa rule though as well saying that you can't do these activities with them or is that a big 12 rule or what is that rule? It's, it's both right now because, uh -huh. you know, not everybody can come back. So it's, you know, it's one of those deals where we're very fortunate um, that, that, that could happen for us. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, you don't want any unfair advantages for anybody. So, yeah. you know, I think it's great. I think it's good for us to, to not rush back into it and have all those guys together and running around and, um, I think it's good that they they come back and we slow continue to slow it down and and keep it at a pace where we can maintain their health and maintain their focus at the same time. And it's like you said, it affects uh, every program, so everyone's on the level playing field of all the rules um, that that apply. But how much is this going to affect newcomers this year compared to you know you got to get Dejuan Antonio and Monty working out early last year. Um, so it's so much different this year in how you can get a handle on it. Obviously, it'll be the same for every uh, school, but how much different will that be for newcomers? Well, the one thing, this, this whole having everybody the whole summer is not very old. I mean, it's not mm -hmm. a very old concept. And plus, we used to start, college basketball used to start on October 15th, used to be Midnight Madness. Yeah. And a lot of great teams started on October 15th. That was our date in college and back in the early 90s. And and even up into the early 2000s, it was still October 15th. So, I, you know, I, I think sometimes we can get ahead of ourselves and want to rush back to something that we feel is needed. But like I said, guys used to never go to summer school and still had great careers, great teams. And mm -hmm. um, you can still get a lot done. And, I, and, and, you know, sometimes as coaches, the misconception is I got to be doing something all the time really gets in the way of just spending time with your kids and really making sure – that, that they're safe, like we have to right now. And I'll keep yep. saying it again, we got to make sure that they're safe, number one. A lot of new additions on the squad, but also a new addition on the staff. First, talk about what it was like to um, – what uh, what you're losing in a guy like Brad Corn, obviously getting the head coach position for SEMO, but then what you're bringing in with a guy like Shane Southwell and what he means to K-State. Well, I mean, when what you lose in Brad is somebody who who's us. 
but you're gaining somebody who's that same way. But Brad, mm -hmm. obviously, is very valuable because of his, his experience. Um, he's a traveled coach, meaning he's not just been in one place and learned one way. He's worked for different guys. And, uh, you know, he's a good basketball coach. He's, a, you know, we call a ball coach. You know, he's a guy who, who loves the basketball side of coaching, um, which is a thing. You know what I mean? And it's, it's if, you love, if you love hoop and you still love playing, and he still loved playing with our guys, and he, every day he challenged somebody, I think our guys are going to miss that more more than they realize of playing Coach Corn one on one uh, before mm -hmm. practice. Uh, but you but you lose a friend and somebody who you watch grow up, and obviously you're happy for him and his family. Um, that he's got a chance to be a head coach, and going from you know I first met him as a player, and then, and then on my staff, and then to working with him. You know I've been every level with him in his career and in most of his adult life, so you know seeing him grow mature and have that opportunity we're really happy for him but um as far as Shane yeah Shane, Shane is is a guy who you knew had it when you coached him because he didn't like mistakes he didn't like when he acted like a coach honestly when he played he would get so upset when guys wouldn't know the plays he would be so upset <laughs> When guys didn't know where they're supposed to be, mm -hmm. so you, when when you know you you can tell what guys that you coach or want to be coaches, and he definitely was one of those guys. And and to have him back, and he constantly reminds us that he's seven for seven as far as NCAA appearances, mm -hmm. um, four as a player, two as a GA, and then one is full time uh, this past year. And, and and so he brings winning, and that mm -hmm. is important, you know it's important to have people who, who are winners and also know your system. Absolutely. I did almost forget. I do still want to go through some of these new guys and I'll let you talk about them. But um, I guess let's start. I don't think you, we've, you've been able to talk about Siri Lewis uh, since we've talked last. So talk about what he's going to bring to the table. The last signee that you haven't spoke about. Siri brings that toughness and uh, that energy and enthusiasm of a, of a combo forward. You know, I don't think Siri knows how good he is. And, you know, it's our job to get him to the best version of himself. Uh, but I think he's a kid who's going to let us really push him and really get him and grow grow him as a player and help him to get to a level he didn't think he could get. And then that's what's exciting about him is that we know his best is, is, is ahead of him. And then what, what does he do on the court that I think that you, that you would describe to K-State fans and what they could look forward to? Especially with the potential he has that you talk about. Well, I think he's he's a he's a taller Nino Williams. I think mm -hmm. he's a good mid range shooter. He's a relentless on the boards. He'll be a guy who you don't run stuff for, and you'll look up and he'll have a lot of points and rebounds mm -hmm. just off sheer hustle and energy. And um, you know that's what we're hoping that we have now. What we hope he can grow into is something else. That can, you know, range out to three, and that's something that. He knows he has to work on being a better ball handler. Uh, those are things he knows he has to work on. But what he's got right now, we are super excited about because that energy and love for the game, he's definitely got it. And then the next year I want to talk about moving to the transfers now. Let's start with Rudy Williams. Uh, I mean, I feel like you, you lose a guy like David Sloan and, and you bring in someone who might be even more talented offensively um, as, as far as scoring the ball um, and still – Still a really good playmaker on that end. Rudy, Rudy's one of those guys where if you sit down five minutes with him, you'll love him. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. He, he is he, – he's – I don't know how to describe him, but he's one of those dudes that you like, you know, just because he, he's very well-versed with everything. Like, yeah. he can talk anything. Anything you want, he can talk. Um, and, you know, he's a guy who, who talks the talk, walks the walk. He, <laughs> he, he will be visibly um, competitive. I think that's the best way to describe him is he's, he's extremely competitive, and, and that'll, that'll stick out when you see him play. Um, he's, he's a do-it-all guard. He can score it a bunch of different ways. Um, you know, looking forward to just having him because, you know, we want that defensive mindset at that lead guard again mm -hmm. and a guy who can do a lot of stuff on that side and not dependent on how many shots I make. We want, we want to be able to, to, to play guys 
people will play hard because they love playing, and that is who Rudy is. And then a lot of – I mean, a lot of guys look at Rudy. Is he a pure point guard? Or do you see him out there as a guy that – you could see Nigel and Rudy out there at the same time, I'm sure, right? I mean, you just have to wait and see how, how it all plays out. Like, you know, both of them – yeah, I mean, at some point we'll play them together. But yeah. I, I think you, you got to just see how they play and you see what, what we are and what we become because we have so many different types of players that provide a real skill set at something. Um, that it's going to be interesting to see what kind of lineups we can play. And it's, it's, it's fun for us to know we can go different ways and know we can have a, a lineup out there with a very – with all new guys, nobody who played in the purple jersey last year. But play at such a high level, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. And that's what, that's what the most important thing, how hard are we going to play? Yeah. And how hard are you going to play um, will determine how much playing time you get. No doubt, no doubt. So – I guess the next guy to talk about is Carlton Lingard, the Temple Junior College transfer. Um, I guess what's he bringing to the table? 6'11". I mean, got a little skill to him. I mean, he's like a slinky. I mean, you know that toy is kind of slinky. He <laughs> keeps going up. You just keep looking up, and he's long, and um, he's athletic. He can shoot. Um, obviously, we know where he can get to is a pretty high ceiling for him. And just getting – we just – you know, he's one of those dudes you just can't wait to get your hands on because you know it's something, it's something there that's special. And, 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 you know, again, excited about him. Great kid, too. And, and so, you know, we really, we really put a premium on the kid in yep. this recruiting class. We really put a premium on how good of a person, you know, how they, how they interact and play, and play with other good players. Mm-hmm. And that was something we really focused on. And, yeah, I mean, I could tell, too, obviously – uh, not only talented dudes, every single one of these guys I've spoke with has been nothing but all love, like really, really nice guys. So I can attest to that. But the last one I want to talk about, who I believe, my personal opinion, day one starter at the five position, Casey Eziagu. I saw him on the sidelines of, um, <laughs> on the bench this past season, and it uh, seems like he already has got the fire in him, and he's got the size. So talk about Casey. Well, Casey's definitely a body and a physical specimen. Um, you know, but we, we kind of lost that ability to, to throw it to the post. We've been spoiled for so long when you, when you've had guys like Gip and DJ and mm-hmm. Dean Wade, you know, you guys, you can throw it to that command double teams, yeah. right? You know, hopefully Casey will grow into that. And, you know, we still got to remember, he's only going to be a sophomore, yeah. which is great for us. You know, we get to, we get to groom him and grow him. Uh, into something that 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 we think can be a really tough out in our league because he number one he can finish with both hands he's got great touch he's a really good person you know mm-hmm. you know sometimes I think too friendly I think we got to <laughs> turn him into Mr. Mean a little bit you know got to got to get him a little he's meaner than Mac meaner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but I just I just I just think I just think that he is um he definitely is 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 a guy we can throw it to late and expect to get a basket from and be disappointed when he doesn't score mm-hmm. around the rim. Yeah, no doubt. Um, I think the final question I think I have for you, and I think I know the answer to this, um, we've talked about this before, but just so the people can hear it from you, and maybe it's changed, but what is the plan with that final scholarship in, uh, uh, of that 2020 class, and, or is it going to roll over to next, next class? You know, we just we just feel, um, you know, we we have a great group already, yep. and you know, when you look at what we have, we are double in every position, um, and, and so you always want to be able to do that, but you also want to be able to slide a guy up and down uh, the roster, and I think we can do that too. So um, we think we got the right amount of size, right amount of guard play, and you know, at this point. You know, if something crazy, yeah, we would take a guy and probably sit him out. But um, to have two in 2021, probably at this time would be the most beneficial for us uh, moving forward, just because you want to make sure that these young boys have time to grow and mm-hmm. and make sure it's the right type of growth. Not 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 that we say, we you know, it's always great to have competition, but we'd like for that competition to come a lot from this year and then be able to groom them and then go to the next year uh, to, to, to bring new guys into the family. Yep. 
associate head coach Chris Lowry for Kansas State basketball. He's obviously knows Zoom even better than me with Bram in the background. <laughs> I know people on KSO give me crap all the time for my bare walls. Take a look at him. Um, <laughs> but it's been fun, Coach. I really appreciate the time. No, thank you. Man. You know, we, we definitely – can't go long again without doing nope. these. You know, obviously, I enjoy doing them, and it's always good to be in Manhattan and, and invest in our own establishments that we that we've used in the past. So, Early Edition, and um, obviously Bourbon and Baker and the mm -hmm. Tap House have been great to us, and we appreciate those places allowing us to use them um, for for the coffees in the past. And, and yeah, and I'm excited to continue to use them in the future. And, and we have no excuse, even if we can't use those places, because we can get on the computer and do it just like this. But absolutely. Thank, thank you, Coach. A lot of fun. That's Coach Lowry. You'll see him here on KSO all the time. A lot of love. Uh, till next time, Coach. Thanks.